Hey, what's going on everybody? It is me, it is the Original Gamer Stevie Stroh, and we're back for another exciting episode of Programming in Basic on the Color Computer. And, uh, you know, I've had a little bit of work to get to be to the point where I wanted to finish a project that I was in the middle of, so I've had a little bit of work just on the programming side. And I've had a couple of challenges thrown at me technically with issues with VCC and a few other things like that. And I'm not here trying to air any dirty laundry or certainly not going to disparage um, any of these great emulation products that we have. But uh, I did run into a problem with VCC. It is a problem with my computer right now. I can't blame it on the emulator, but I can't get VCC to work the way I want it to anymore. So I had to re completely redo the way I record my videos. <laughs> and because I can't use VCC I'm now using MAME and I'm not going to get into the technical stuff about setting up MAME or anything like right now but the good news about using MAME is that MAME actually does a better job of emulating the artifact colors and we just recorded a video today with Tim Lindner uh, about um, MAME's ability to emulate the speech and sound cartridge now too which is really cool so at some point in time when we get to this point in the series and we start working on games I'll probably include um, the basic language version of support for the speech and sound cartridge too and some of the projects that we work on so let me go ahead and show you what some of the things I was working on were and where they ended up here was my original fonts routine that I started off with and um, these were my font letters. Uh, I had to do them on reverse text because they were getting really bad artifacts. And they, right here, they were very close together. So in um, VCC, the, when the, the letters were so close together, there was red and blue stripes right next to the, to the letter. So in my first version of fonts, um, this is where I designed my fonts and my numbers. You also see here the numbers aren't exactly underneath the letters here. But I finally finished designing all my fonts, and I designed numbers but they needed a little bit of tweaking. So that was my first fonts. So then that brought me to fonts too. In fonts too, I basically fixed all of the spacing with not only the letters, but the numbers. And so now I increased all the spacing between all of my fonts. And so now they are spread out now to where they're not artifacting right next to each other. I also spread out the spacing in my numbers. And so now my numbers are, um, are evenly lined up underneath the letters and so all the spacing of my characters I've designed right now they work fine so now I was with basically a set of fonts here's my fonts here's my numbers not only was this a DYI challenge from the draw chapter but this is also kind of a necessary component as we start to design games and graphics so we can um, so we can start to put text on our graphic screens. Now one of the things I discovered was that unfortunately my fonts don't scale very well and my fonts don't work well in low resolution. So when we do things in P mode 3 they don't look as good but it is kinda is what it is and I'm not gonna spend any more time developing fonts right now. So what's the next thing I did? Well I said okay well I've got my fonts but the way I'm reading in my fonts right now um, uh, I guess I had already converted my fonts to ASCII here. Let me go ahead and load back um, my original fonts because I want to talk about ASCII and character strings and stuff. So when I go to load fonts and I list in how I read my fonts, um, right now I was listing in my fonts so the letter A was text string 1, letter B was text strings 2, so I did things kind of numerically starting on A being 1, B being 2, C being 3, and then I had a separate set of strings for numbers, so I had number string 0, number string 1, number string 2, and that works fine if I want to do some type of, you know, custom way of doing things, but I wanted a more natural and um, uh, computerly organic way of doing things. So what I ended up doing was I converted the number value system of how I read in my um, how I read in my my characters to use the ASCII code. So I just wrote a little program here to show you what um, ASCII code looks like and what character string stuff looks like. So like what I want to show you here right now as I move my mouse around is that okay so this is the space this is the space character which is one blank space the space actually happens to be what we call character string 32 based on the ASCII code of 32 ASCII is a code where every single symbol has a, a value so 32 is space which is blank 33 is exclamation point which is here once we get into my numbers like the zero is where the heck is the zero? I can't even find it. So the zero is 48. 
So 48 is 0, 49 is 1, and then we get all the way up to A. And so ASCII code 65 is how we generate letter A, and 66 is B as well. So why am I explaining this crazy stuff here? And by the way, I use dark brackets to wrap around the ASCII code. So the ASCII code is a number between 0 and 255, and that number represents what the character or the symbol on the screen would look like. And this is a standard code that goes back to like IBM mainframes. This, this code has, this code still works today. So ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Inter Exchange or something like that. It's a way to generate all the text characters on our display screens. So I decided to read my text in as ASCII characters and the reason why is that I want to write my routine to where my routine can take normal text, strip the text down into a normal character, convert that to ASCII and then draw it based on the ASCII and that just simplifies the math I have to do. So what do I mean by all that again? If I load in my original fonts program and I list through the fonts program, Originally, when I read in my um, characters, so T strings was my text string, so my first letter A was read in as text string 1. In order for this to be um, in sync with how the ASCII code works, I really need string A to not be uh, T string 1, it needs to be T string 65. So I had to add 64 to that when I was reading it in. When it came to reading in my numbers, instead of reading in the numbers as separate, strings, it's all part of t-strings because the number is part of text, it's part of ASCII, it's part of a code too. So the 0 needed to be 48, the 1 needed to be 49. So the actual the data to draw the letters hasn't changed but the numbers I use to reference the string variables that put them on the screen now instead of it being kind of a very linear sequential thing with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it now is more ASCII compliant where it follows that and I think by the time I did fonts 2, I think I had already fixed that. So when I load in fonts 2, I think now the font data is the same, but yeah, so when I'm reading in the text, I read this stuff in now, and um, but see, I basically, um, for t equals 1 to 26, that's my 26 letters, but now when I read them and I draw them, I'm adding 64 now, so I'm doing them as ASCII. So fonts 2 um, looks very similar to font 1, although I've fixed things, but now the string information is actually being stored in an ASCII format. Why is this useful? Because when I get to fonts 3 now, I actually took all my fonts data and I wrote a routine where I could pass text along to this routine and it'll print out anything I want it to print out on the screen here. So in this one now I'm doing in the normal white on black and you can see the artifact colors here. But here it is. This is Fonts Demo Version 3 by OG Stevie Show. This, this demo draws text on the graphic screen. We pass a D string and we go sub 8000. 8000 draws a string and it returns when done. So anything that I put into the term D string as text will get passed off to a routine that will strip that text down, convert it to ASCII, do a lookup on the ASCII value, draw the graphic version of that letter on the screen, and then continue to pass its way through here. So what does all that look like now when I list this out? Uh, what does my routine look like? This is my routine that, re that read it in. So if I list 8000 through 8999, okay. This is the actual routine that converts text into graphics. So what I do is I pass, I pass to um, uh, subroutine on line 8000, I pass D strings. D strings is what I want to draw on the screen. I figure out the length, and so if I send the word Steve, S-T-E-V-E, -E, that's five characters, so I would go from one to five. The first thing I'm going to do on character one is I'm going to pull out the mid string for that, and so the first letter of Steve would be S. S gets turned into ch string or a character string. I then say a equals the ASCII value of that character string and so I then turn text as an, as an alphanumeric character I then convert that into a decimal number that is the ASCII value of that. I haven't covered this yet because I haven't found it in the chapter but um, I needed it for my routine. So I take an individual character, I convert that to ASCII, and then I use that ASCII value as my lookup table for my text strings that I want to draw. So if the first letter was A, 
the ASCII value of A would be 65. I would then draw text string 65, which would be the graphical data for the letter A. Everything's in harmony and in sync now. I then go through the rest of T, and I do it for however many times is left for that string, and then I pass it back. And so if I list, um, like what is my what is my what does my routine look like that I'm passing things through? Well, the first thing I do in line 10 is I go sub 9,000. 9,000 is what reads in all of the data to um, read in all the data to draw these strings. Here's my actual routine right now. Um, my routine here says, uh, well, I continue to go here. So I'm going to set my P mode screen. I'm, I'm basically setting my position to 10, 10. Um, I say D string equals fonts demo. I go sub 8000, that draws out fonts demo. Then I go to 1020, I go down 10 pixels to a new line and I say version three. I pass that over and that gets drawn. Then I go down 10 more pixels and I say by AG, OG Stevie Stroh and I pass that over. So I can keep passing uh, uh, a piece of text to my drawing routine now that's called D strings. Whatever's in D string will get drawn by the routine and that looks like this now. So this was just my little demonstration to um, show that I can pass text off to my routine and my routine will convert text to graphics and put it on the screen. The fonts look cool, but now that I look at them, they look kind of big. I don't like the fact that they're as artifacty as they are, and I don't like the fact that if I try to draw these in P mode 3, they look like complete, complete crap. So um, I'm probably going to redesign these later, but it's going to be much later. So for now, these are what my fonts are going to look like. They're not terrible but they are what they are. So what was the next thing that I did? Well then I took this same program here, this Fonts Demo 3, and then I stripped out all of the stuff that um, did the demo part and I just con and then I just loaded it into a routine that I could merge. So this program here that's called fmerge, um, and I had to renumber it super high because my graphics demo is already getting into the 10,000s. So in my F merge, um, I think it's like 20,000 and 30,000. So 29 list 0 through 29999. Okay, this is the part here. This is the routine. So the 20 the the, the 20,000 routine. This is the routine that whatever you pass it as D string, it will um, basically break it down, figure out the length, break it down character by character, convert it to ASCII, draw it based on the ASCII code, um, finish this for however many times the length of this is, and then return. So these five, six lines here, this is the actual routine that does the dirty work to draw the fonts on the screen. So line 30,000, um, is all of the data to do all of the drawing and then basically line 30, 30,000 and 36 through 43. This is how we dim in our text. Um, I also said T string 32. Character string 32 is just a space and, and I just went ahead and, and just fed that in, hard coded that as moving over nine pixels to the right uh, for that space. So I've got my space character in here as well. So the first thing I do is I say for T equals one to 26, I read in the 26 letters of the alphabet. I add 64 to them, so A is 65, B is 66. Then I say for number equals zero to nine, and I then read in the text strings of N plus um, uh, 48, so the character string 0 is 48, 1 is 49, and so on. And so this reads in the alphabet and the numbers and the space bar. I've skipped all the symbols and commas and punctuation. I can do that later. But I basically got two routines here now. I've got the one routine that loads in the data and it, it, it has all the data statements that specify the, the graphical information. I read these data into variable arrays. And that's a, that's a whole block of code that starts on line 30,000. I got a small block of code that starts on line 20,000 that anything I pass to that routine will get drawn out on the screen. So now, then what I did 
is I saved this with a comma A option. And if you'll notice here that the F merge basic program has got an A instead of a B. You'll notice everything else has a B for binary. So I saved this out in ASCII, which means that it's saved out in kind of a raw format where every character is what it is. It's not con converted into binary or compressed or anything else like that. So um, I then took this and I merged it into my graphics demo. So my original graphics demo, the last one we did was version 1.2. And in version 1.2, I had added circles and lines and stuff like that. But I've now added my text routine to my graphics demo, and I used the disk basic merge command. So I merged the 20,000 and 30,000 block of um, code into my graphics demo. I updated my graphics demo to where it can now draw the word graphics demo on the screen graphically. And then I also have another random option that will draw up to nine random letters on the screen um, anywhere you know the computer decides to do this randomly. So when I run now gdemo uh, 1.3 this is now the culmination of everything I've been working on right now. First right now you notice the title screen says graphics demo version 1.3 and you know our screen modes change and things like that. That's nothing new. So now we go now we're jumping around to our different graphics modes. Here's our different graphics modes and I think the colors look a little bit better too. See, you can see it's printing graphics demo. It's a little bit hard to read when these fonts are not done in P mode 4, but we'll get there. And so we're just randomly drawing text there. It's drawing out graphics demo again. And so I've basically added two more random calls to this routine. It does all the normal stuff, the pixels, the lines, the boxes, the circles, the filled circles, the arcs, the ellipses. It does all those. But then there's two more options. One option is um, write out the exact word graphics demo. And another option says pick up to the number between 1 and 8 and draw that many random characters on the screen. And so we'll see a kind of a combination of the two. And hopefully it'll be nice to get a nice P mode 4 screen here in just a minute where we can read the fonts nice and clearly. That's the only time these fonts look really clear. So let's see. So while we're waiting on the computer to do that, I'm just going to also mention too, the, now you can kind of see it there, and here's a nice P mode 4 screen, and the, um, the fonts look good there. Graphics demo looks pretty good. Um, so I actually have started blogging about this, because some of the work I did leading up to this I have blogged about, because I didn't have time to record it on a video. So you'll see some screenshots of the um, evolution of these fonts. Um, and so uh, you'll be able to look at a blog for, you know, why would you want to? I don't know. But anyways, I'm doing it as an exercise and learning how to blog as well. But I, I have been asked, um, is there any way you can share your code and share your programs and share your demo stuff? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to put uh, a copy of this disk image on my blog. So every time I update a new video, there'll be a new blog post that follows it and there'll be a copy of the the programs I've done so far. So the first time I upload a disk image, it's going to include Graphics Demo 1.3 that you're seeing now. So future ones will have the newer projects that we work on and the enhancements to the demo and stuff. So this will be the first time that you'll actually be able to get a copy of this code because people have been asking for it. And I have no problem sharing these fonts. They're cool, but they're not amazing, and there's nothing really so proprietary here that I'm not worried about sharing some fonts. And it's just, it's kind of cool because then you can look at them and then you can see, all right, well, what would I do differently? How would I change this? And so, yeah, I just want to see like a string of random characters here if they just happen to show up and they actually happen to be legible. So, um, another cool thing about me switching over to MAME. Um, is that I can actually copy and paste stuff directly into MAME. So I actually have somebody who left a comment on one of my earlier videos about fonts and he gave me all of the information to generate fonts that where the work has already been done. And at the time, I number one, I didn't want to take it because I wanted to go through this struggle and design it myself. Uh, and then number two, I was like, well, I have no idea on how I could copy and paste this into VCC or into an emulator. Well, at the moment, VCC doesn't let you copy and paste, but um, MAME does. And so I might take this person's font data where they've generated all the alphabet and all the symbols and read it in and look at it and see if I can incorporate that. I don't feel as um, I don't feel like it's a, as much of a hacky, cheaty thing to do now since I have actually done this work and I've designed these fonts and I've you know gone through the process 
Um, I feel happy and proud of what I ended up doing. Again, it's not they're not the best fonts, but they're all right. Um, and so yeah, so the demo is not the graphics demo. Demo, it's random. You know, the gods of random decisions are always interesting, right? So I wanted to see some cool text on the screen, but we'll see it. But what you're looking at here is now the culmination of a lot of work of me designing the fonts, finishing the fonts, tweaking the fonts, writing the routine to push out fonts in any way I see fit, and then incorporating that routine into my graphics demo as well as saving it out as a slice of mergeable code for fonts that I can bring into any other program in the future. So it's kind of cool now that we I can create different routines for different things, save them out as little code snippets, as little mergeable pieces. There's an ME right there that just showed up randomly. Um, and then take these codes and then just merge them into my programs now that I figured out how to use the merge command. It's pretty cool. It's pretty fun. Um, and there you have it there. So graphics demo me. <laughs> so yeah, so this is it. So the next video we're going to do is going to be the next chapter video, which is the get input chapter. So we will go through that one next, but I just wanted to show this off and hopefully you guys like the update and um, again there'll be a copy of this on my website ogstevestro.com on a blog post where you can download the disc image until then I am the original gamer Stevie Stro and happy Coco coding we'll see you in the world of basic sometime real soon take care bye bye everybody